This is our second video on solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. Hopefully you saw the first video and you know the first step in this is to move this 8 over to the other side. So subtract 8 from both sides, which cancels it out from this side and gives us this on the next step. Remember we put this plus blank on both sides so that we remember to add whatever we're adding to both sides. What goes in this blank is half of the middle squared. Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So I'm adding 4 to both sides, which gives me this. The whole purpose in doing this adding 4 is so that we have created this to become a perfect square trinomial, which says I can factor it as something squared. I've got to get it into parentheses squared. This is just negative 6 plus 4 equals negative 2. Well, what number we squared to get 4 was 2. So now we're to an easy place. This is something squared equals negative 2. Undo the squaring by square rooting. When we square root this side, the square root of x plus 2 squared is just x plus 2. And over on this side, two little things happen. Remember, when you solve an equation by taking the square root, you get a plus or minus. Also, this was the square root of a negative, so we brought an i out in front. The square root of 2 does not factor tree out, so this is as simple as it gets. All I have to do now is subtract 2 from both sides, and this is my final answer. I do have two solutions, negative 2 plus i radical 2 and negative 2 minus i radical 2, which fits with the idea that x squared should produce two solutions. Another problem, let's get rid of that minus 4 by adding 4 to both sides. The difference in this problem and the previous problems is that the middle coefficient is an odd number. It is still the same process, it's just the arithmetic is going to produce a fraction. All we're doing is taking half of the middle. So just put a line and put a 2 underneath there, and then square this. 5 halves squared is 25 fourths, because when you square a fraction, you square the top, you square the bottom. Of course, if your calculator does fractions, you just type in 5 divided by 2, hit squared, and then shift it back to a fraction with whatever button you have to push. So this is what we have on this step. Two things now. We need to factor this as x plus something squared. We need to do the arithmetic to get these together. Hopefully you have a calculator that does this directly for you. If it doesn't, you need to give this a denominator of 1, get a common denominator of 4, which means multiply top and bottom by 4. So this right here really is 16 fourths. 25 fourths plus 16 fourths is where the 41 fourths comes in. Over here, I have to come up with the number that's going to go in this blank. Well, it's still the same idea of what did we square to get 25 fourths? 5 halves. So here it is, looking a little more neat. And now I'm at the easy spot, which is take the square root of both sides. This is going to come out to be x plus 5 halves over here. A couple things went on here. This was the square root of both sides. When we did the square root, we picked up a plus or minus. The square root of 41 will not simplify, but the square root of 4 gives us 2. Now to get this x alone, I need to subtract 5 halves from both sides, which gives me this, which is not wrong. It's just we do one more thing. Because it has a common denominator of 2, we put it together over 2, all of this numerator together over 2. Sometimes the terms are shuffled around, but hopefully you realize from the last several problems we want the x squared and the x term together on the left side. We want the plain old number term over to the other side. So we're going to do two things here. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides, which is going to send the 2 over this way. We're going to add 3x to both sides, which is going to send the 3x over there. So this is what this looks like reorganized. With our blanks, we have an odd middle term, so we're going to take half of that and square it. Gives us 9 fourths to add to both sides. The arithmetic over here, plug it into your calculator if you have one that does that. If not, give this a denominator of 1, multiply top and bottom by 4, which makes this negative 8 fourths, so that this right here becomes 1 fourth. How this factors, what did we square to get 9 fourths? We squared 3 halves. Rather than thinking, what did we square to get 9 fourths, you could think, what's the square root of 9 fourths? Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2. Now we're ready to solve this by taking the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of the left, we just lose the radical sign and the square root over here. Square root of this is plus or minus the one half. Subtract three halves from both sides. Gives us this. 
which because these are all rational numbers, no radicals, no imaginaries, we can put these together. So what this becomes, I put it all together over the denominator of 2, and now I'm going to evaluate the high road and the low road. I will do negative 3 plus 1 over 2 and negative 3 minus 1 over 2. So that's both of those written out. Negative 3 plus 1 over 2, do your arithmetic, gives you negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. The low road is negative 3 minus 1, gives us negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So here's our two solutions. If there's a coefficient in front of x squared, you must divide out that coefficient before you complete the square. All of the previous examples only had an x squared here, no coefficient. Now that we have a coefficient, we need to get rid of it by just doing a very simple divide everything by 2. Everything by 2, left side and right side. Of course, on this side, 0 divided by anything is still 0, so that didn't make a change. But there are problems where this could be a different number. Sometimes when you divide out that coefficient, you luck out into coming out nice and neat. 2 divided evenly into everything. We also happen to still have an even number in the middle, which makes the arithmetic a little bit easier for us. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. Now it looks like this. The middle term is even. Take half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4 is what we're going to add in the blank to both of these. We need to factor this as something squared, and it factors as x plus 2 squared. 5 plus 4 is 9. Easy part coming up. Take the square root of both sides, which just gives us x plus 2 on the left side. We get a plus or minus because we are solving by taking the square root. Square root of 9 is 3. Subtract 2 from both sides, which gives us this arrangement. And because these are rational numbers, no radicals, no imaginaries, I need to do the high road and low road. So we have negative 2 plus 3. That's this one. And then negative 2 minus 3 is this one. So our solutions are 1 and negative 5. With this one, we're going to divide everything by the coefficient of 3. And when we do that, things didn't come out even for us, but we can deal with this. It's still the same process, though. We still want to move this 5 thirds to the other side, so let's subtract 5 thirds from both sides, which gives us this. Now let's talk about the completing the square. If your calculator will do this for you, it's going to be easier. So you could enter 10 divided by 3, and then divide by 2, and then square that value, change it back to a fraction, and that's what gets added to the two blanks. If your calculator will not do that, then I suggest you come over to the side and you write negative 10 thirds times a half. Quantity squared. So clean up the inside first. The 2 goes into 10 5 times. So the inside is really negative 5 thirds, and that's the value we want to square. Squaring this is going to give us 25 ninths to add to both sides. Now we have to do this arithmetic over here. If your calculator will do it for you, you just type in negative 5 divided by 3 plus 25 divided by 9, hit enter, change it back to a fraction, and there you go. If your calculator does not do fractions, you need a common denominator, which is 9. Multiply this denominator by 3, the top by 3, which gives us negative 15 over 9. So 25 ninths minus 15 ninths gives this side to be 10 ninths. Over here, we need to get this factored as something squared. It will have to be x minus, because that's a minus. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 9 is 3. So here's what this line looks like. The easy step, which is take the square root of both sides. We get x minus 5 thirds over here. Square root of 10 ninths, we have a plus or minus. The square root of 10 will not simplify. The square root of 9, though, is 3. That's why the radical is just in the top. Let's add 5 thirds to both sides, which gives us this. Because we have a common denominator, we can keep that common denominator and put these numerators together in one big line. And that's your solution. So here are your steps for completing the square of a quadratic equation. First off, if there is a coefficient, divide everything by a and then take this plain old number c and move it to the other side. Take half of the x coefficient and square it. Add that number to both sides. And the reason you want to do that is so that you can get the left side factored as some quantity squared, either plus or minus, depending on the sign of the middle term. And then once you have it like that, you can take the square root of both sides and then solve for x.